Hey guys, it's 12 noon or around that time, and uh, we're here in lockdown. I have got Kevin Doyle, my producer extraordinaire, here in his lockdown area. How you doing, Kevin? I'm good. How are you? We're actually a couple minutes late today, but okay. Yeah, it's our fault. We were just sitting there just chatting it up. <laughs> we're like, oh yeah, aren't we supposed to go live on this thing? Okay. Yeah. So we, no, yeah, we people promise. are waiting on us. They're actually sending us questions. So maybe we should get over and do this. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, let's show up TM's um, the latest one right there. Uh, at the very bottom. Okay, there we go. <laughs> he oh, called us go. out. Yeah. What is Sorry. this starting? Sorry, TM. Sorry. We, you know, noon. Well, actually, late. noon. Noon o two. Noon, noon o two. We were a few minutes late. <laughs> So we were um, we were looking at some um, a website that we're going to review here. Um, one and someone that sent us their portfolio. So we're going to look at that. So we're going to look at that later in the show. Um, we're going to remind you again. Hey, if you want to sub us up and like us, I guess it's down there. One of those down, yeah, there, down there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, down there. <laughs> And uh, it's mirrored here on the interface, but like, uh, so like, uh, you know, um, like us, sub us up, and we would love to interact with you there as well to see any of the content we're coming up. If you didn't know, we've been established that Scott Hanselman, um, he's the lead at um, on .NET and Visual Studio team, making those products for Microsoft. Um, he is going to be on the show tomorrow at noon, so make sure you don't uh, miss that. So. I'm excited um, for that. It's going to be yeah, cool. Yeah, it's going to be cool. And he's, de he's definitely going to be here because yeah. we he has to be now because we tweeted it out and he liked the tweet. So yeah. <laughs> he'll so be he here can't. tomorrow. So. He can't say, man, I would like to see that Scott guy. He can't, he can't, you know, he, he is the Scott guy. So, you know. It's going to be awesome. It's yeah, he has, he has a lot of things about working from home. Um, he's been doing a lot lately on his blog. We'll give you all the links to his blog and his Twitter if you want to follow him on Twitter. Uh, but Scott Hanselman. Um, it's in charge of .NET and Visual Studio. We'll be here tomorrow at noon. All right. Yeah, I've watched so, his videos on his YouTube channel. He has a lot of working from home stuff, which is super yeah. good about uh, how to get a better camera setup, which yeah. slightly related. I've been trying to do here, trying to find a um, an interface for USB for a camera is like, yeah. it's like gold. People are charging 400 bucks for these things. They're like $100. It's nuts. Right. Everyone's doing it. So yeah. It's funny, no, um, the Black Magic Pocket Cinema you can stream with web now. Oh, so, that's cool. Um, we're Black Magic fans, we shoot with Black Magic cameras. So, if you know what a Pocket Cinema is, um, I think it's funny how companies react to this COVID where you can't buy a webcam to save your life, right? And suddenly they make this cinema camera you can stream it, you know, because they can yep. update it. So, try like buying that. a green screen at the minute, too. Like, yeah. apparently, nowhere has them, right? <laughs> Everybody needs a green screen for home. Right. But you could go to your local hardware store and um, look up the you paint code and, get, and make it and paint it if you, you want a green one. screen, if you got to yep. have one. Yeah. So, all right. Well, let's, let's go with a couple of questions. And today we're going to talk about the hidden job market. So, um, yeah. 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 So, okay. David, David. Um, hey, David, how you doing? Um, thanks for coming on. Um, often read. I'll let you read this one, Kevin. Yeah, you've been okay. Oft, often read that you should perform professionally to reach the secret marketplace. What is professional from the view of the industry? I knew it can't be clearly defined. Yeah, in our industry, that's true, Kevin. It's not clearly defined. Um, there are no like, like tr um, true and fast ways to demonstrate your professionalism. I right. will say though, if you have a pro LinkedIn account and you have a professional um, portfolio that they can go look at that helps um, what you're doing, especially if you're just breaking in. A lot of times if you've been doing this for five years, they're just going to look at your work history. But if you don't have that, you've got to do something else and you've got to show a portfolio to do that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about like how we break into some of these companies and some of the advice we give here at Cutter Founder to students and, and their job search and us putting um, candidates through the job search, putting them through um, um, interviews. I think we have some good advice to help you do that. That's not traditional that you'll see on the internet. So, right. Definitely. Yeah. Let's do another question here. So Glenn looks like Glenn is coming to join us in July, which is cool. That's our next yeah. virtual, um, session we have starting. Yeah. So he's coming asking what he should do in the meantime, self-study in C sharp, SQL server, web assembly.net core blazer. Is he on the right track? He's it's ahead too, of the game, I think. It's too many things, Glenn. <laughs> so, like, um, definitely, um, I want you to be um, very familiar with JavaScript coming in um, and learning that kind of thing. So, you're going to need to do the front end stuff that we build out. We're also going to teach you C Sharp SQL Server, um, but you do not need to um, mess with Blazor for our class at this point. 
So yeah. um, I think it's better if you have net. a solid, just sort of solid understanding of the front end stuff. The best students have that. They, they already are familiar with stuff. If you've seen it before, mm -hmm. it just makes it easier when you see right. it again. Yeah. And then we're going to teach the MVC design pattern. So in our class, so like, um, don't look at razor pages, um, that design pattern, look at MVC design pattern. If you're going to go into the C sharp route, but like, make sure you understand JavaScript, manipulating the DOM logic. Um, you can, those kind of things. So that's cool. All right. If you want to be live, Kevin, put it just, up there. Just Tell a reminder. Yeah. yeah, if you want to come on live, you want to come on video and ask a question, you can um, DM at Coda Foundry on Twitter and we will get you on and you can ask your question live on camera. Hey, let's put our friend person. Matt's question on the on the thing here. Uh, Rousen. I get Matt? it. I found it. I'll put him on there. Oh, I see him. Yeah. <laughs> you got to go. He's saying paint just the whole paint wall. The whole wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. Just paint the whole room. Just paint the whole room green. <laughs> I don't want to do that, Matt. I'll ruin this nice wall back here. Yeah, I, mean, I want so, a pop-up one. They have so Elgato makes a cool pop-up green screen. Yeah, they it's do. like those pop-up banners, and you can take it down and move it around. That's what I want. Yeah. You just can't buy it. <laughs> They're right. sold out everywhere. Yeah. But that's so fine. Matt, 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 uh, Matt's our friend. He's a realtor. Um, so if you're in the North Carolina area and you need to sell your home, um, just contact Matt Rowerson. But yeah, look up the Rowerson Group. I promise you, won't help me buy paint all your houses green that's not what he's gonna say <laughs> he might <laughs> he might he, he might if you want a studio with green screens <laughs> in the living room you know he might can put that out as a feature when he's trying to sell your home built-in green screen <laughs> so that, that is a fee it's a feature for us we'd like that but yeah, maybe not exactly. everybody right okay here we go um agni says we are developers not designers where do we start when trying to build a website to get a job do we buy designs and code that? Great yes, um, definitely. Um, we push templates hard here. Um, we get a lot of pushback on the fact that we use templates here. People think that you should build your HTML from scratch and not use frameworks or anything like that. And that's just simply not um, the most productive use of your time. And you're right, Agni, um, you are a developer and not necessarily a designer, but if you can get a template and you can conform that to the use to match your website, It can you can look like a design rock star. Um, when you get on the job and you're doing backend code, they'll probably ask you to do the front end side and the company's not gonna care if you use the template. In fact, they may prefer that you do so you don't spend you know four weeks um, trying to get a footer on the bottom. <laughs> you know, get right, to which work. we will talk about. We're gonna talk We're gonna about make that. Fun of it, but we will talk about it. <laughs> yeah, but like, um, um, so I yeah, think- Yeah, it's, it's true, like you, it's it's, to be, it is a different skill set. We've seen mm -hmm. some great developers come through the school who had just been bad designers. Right. And I would think you you said a lot that people are visual buyers. So if it yes. looks good, they'll assume your code looks good. If it looks bad, your code could be rock star quality on the back end, but whether they will assume that it is bad. Yeah, exactly. So like, um, um, you need to make it look good. And I think a, a template that's been through the paces, you can um, bring a template in, you can change the primary color of it or the off color to match your logo and you can make it your own. And I will say this, it's not that we don't teach Bootstrap at Coder Foundry, it's just that um, we use Bootstrap and you're gonna do a lot of HTML and CSS work here. It's just that we're not saying that you should start from absolute scratch um, when we're trying to build a project. So right. um, build a template. All right. And here you go. Anthony said too, he's learning bootstrap. Good framework to give the site app a good look without knowing with knowing minimal CSS. And that's so true. Hundred percent right, man. Hundred <laughs> percent right. Just do that. Um, um, you know, and then you know, there's nothing wrong with bootstrap. And you can get very creative with bootstrap. It's just a framework. It's not necessarily uh if you talk to some of these people on Twitter or whatever, um, don't don't let them look down on you. Um yep. Twitter made it, Twitter uses it, it's good for them. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Man, Adam, Adam called us out, looks, as we're slackers, apparently, for starting two minutes late. Two minutes Man. late. <laughs> we're going to start two minutes early tomorrow. Yeah, 11.58 <laughs> with Scott Hanselman. He'll drop gold at 11.58, and then we'll cut him off. <laughs> oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. Here we go. Question about choosing a programming language. How do you overcome choosing a programming language? Yeah, um, so here's the thing that you need to sh um, look into, TM. Um, look at... If you're looking at web dev, 
five to nine languages a week. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I put that there. Wow. So yeah, that's that's uh, crazy. That's crazy, man. So um, here's what we say do. First, pick what you want to build. Um, so you start out with, do I want to build a website? Do I want to build a mobile app? Do I want to build a desktop app? Or do I want to build some kind of like um, other kind of servers or backend servers or microservice? All right. Once you decide what you want to build, that's going to limit the amount of languages that you need to choose. Here at Coder Foundry, we're saying right now, currently this year, that you need to look into web, full stack web dev development. And that's really the hot end of the market right now today. And so when you do that, um, you're going to pick a design pattern. We pick MVC because it's, it's really commonly used. And then once we know that, there's only a couple of choices that we can really pick from. And we pick ASP.NET, C Sharp, and you have to know JavaScript, HTML, CSS, and Bootstrap and SQL. And so that's kind of your stack that you need to work with. If you're doing the same thing with other stacks like Java, you're going to do the front end and you may use something like Spring NBC and still do the back end in database with um, SQL or something like that. And if you're using React Native, you're buying to their um, whole JavaScript ecostructure or Angular. But pick one of those. We feel like ASP.NET and C Sharp is the best route to go. But look in your job market, see what who's hiring for what what they're looking for and to build your projects in that and stay in web dev until you've got that. You feel pretty comfortable with it. Don't jump around because you'll just be learning for the next three years and not breaking and getting a job. All right, cool. Yep. All right. Cool. Just a quick compliment from David. He liked the stream before it even started. <laughs> he likes our content. So All right. thank you, David. Thanks, David. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank I hope you. we make um, you laugh today. We're going to try to like bring it into your day. You know, our video, our video, I think it was the one yesterday. It might have been the day before. Somebody liked somebody disliked it before it even Started. before we were even on it. I'm like, we haven't even said anything wrong yet. Or anything we haven't done anything bad. Like what Right. <laughs> we do have that you. one fan that dislikes everything though. There is one fan who fan who dislikes everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like like we'll have a video that we has like, do. you know, a thousand upvotes and one downvote. We always get at least one downvote at <laughs> 10 a.m. <laughs> Eastern Standard Time. It is funny. It's not I funny. Think it's, I, I like it. Funny. I do like the fact they downloaded uh, it before it even for a stream even appeared. <laughs> before we'd even done anything. But, but David's countering it for us. He's up for right. it before it's even appeared. That's so right. So like give that. us some upvotes. Counter that downvote, man. <laughs> That's so, funny. Uh, all right. Um, let me see. Um, Agni was talking, they were having a conversation about um, where to buy designs. Where to buy the templates? Oh, okay. So, um, you in the U.S. here, there's a website that we use a lot called Theme Forest. Um, so um, maybe you can pull up that, Kevin, on a, and we'll share there that. Somebody actually there. suggested here Web Dev Code Marketplace, like yeah. Envato, which yeah. is the same place, right? Is that yeah. same? And, same yeah, Envato Forest, yeah. and Theme Forest, and yeah. um, make sure when you're looking at um, Theme Forest, you can look at. If you want to do Bootstrap templates, just make sure it's Bootstrap three or four. Um, they're coded in there, so you can pick the type of um, framework that's the that the template was built with so oh now here's here's a good one hold on this is gonna yeah like this one we're gonna All have right. to if you brag like this david you're gonna have to uh you gotta bring it yeah you, 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 you have to share yeah <laughs> he has awards for his portfolio website so that's cool i like that you need to share it with us david send us a Send us an email. Um here you go send it to that info at coderunner.com we'll take a look at it and we'll put it on you, yeah, we want to we want to show award winning websites. That'd be cool. Yeah, Definitely. That's awesome. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, let me see. We have next year. Somebody asked about. You go. Pratam asking how to become a front end developer. Yeah. So front end is um, primarily JavaScript. So um, you've got to build out your JavaScript skills, your design skills. And knowing how to interface um, with the back end from the front end. So, like, um, it could be with Ajax or straight up JavaScript, calling web services, calling web APIs, RESTful services, being able to call all of those things. So, um, they're going to look at your design skills too. So, um, either mastered being able to really get creative on with templates and then knowing how to make those, carve those into a website, but mainly JavaScript and HTML and CSS. <laughs> Cool. David also likes that <laughs> that our theme is in dark mode. That's yeah, yeah. Yep. Dark mode's we, where it's at. We like the dark mode. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, before we answer another question, um, let's um, 
let's talk about our actual topic because we, we had a topic for today a hidden job market okay um so we were talking about before we came on we were talking about well, one of the things that we talk about on the in the boot camp is the hidden job market and mm-hmm. jobs that aren't posted to indeed or monster there's a ton of them and yeah. how, how do you get one of those so like here's how this works and here's the hidden secret on this um a lot of times because at code friend we're also recruiters and we're doing a lot of recruiting we are actually calling into employers and um, they will give us the um, the job listing and not post it on Indeed or any of the job boards. And so Coder Foundry will then will go out and recruit for that, use our students and place them into that role. And that role was never um, posted. Um, one of the problems with Indeed and Monster is like once you post out, you do get a lot of um, a lot of traffic, a lot of posts to your job. And it's really hard to sift through those to figure out what's what sometimes they get mismatched and you know, you have a dev job out there and you get a cashier from target applying for your role. And you can tell right away that some of the job boards, they just mismatch the IDs or something like that. And so you'll get kind of false, um, false applications that aren't really real. Um, and so like, uh, you have to weed through that, call all the people. Um, and so what they'll do is instead of going through that effort, even when they have an HR is they'll just hire recruiting um, companies to do that. So, I mean, I think that's that's really important to know and that I would say it's a good probably 50 percent of the jobs in the U.S. aren't even listed. Yeah, that's crazy. And we talk about a lot of times just working with a recruiter in general, too. Some people Mm -hmm. definitely look down on that, especially once you get established. A lot Mm -hmm. of people like, man, this recruiter is like hitting me up. It sucks. Yeah, that shouldn't be a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. And uh, the other thing, too, that you need to think about recruiters, they're not coders and that's okay. Um, and you need to get over the fact that they sometimes don't know everything about what you do for a living and they're not knowledgeable about maybe specific skill sets or whatever. Um, they're just trying to see if, if you're interested in this position and then it's up to you to look at the position to see if you feel like you're a good fit for that, especially if you're, um, a five-year senior. Um, you know, um, what I would say is build a relationship with a recruiting company or a recruiter. Um, and every time they call, I would say, be nice to them, take their call. Hey, let them take you to lunch, you know, you know and, but you can always tell them I'm not looking right now. Um, uh, but, um, just keep me in mind when something comes up and, um, you never know, you may not be looking, but they may bring you the opportunity of a lifetime that you wouldn't pass up. And because right. you weren't looking and you were so busy in your job, sometimes they may bring you a job and you're like, wow, okay. I'll, I'll look at that. You know, that's yeah. They might happen. have your dream job. I'm moving. <laughs> you know, so like, <laughs> right. uh, you know, especially if you know if, if Cortex called you. You know, you're like, wow, I'm moving to that job. <laughs> so you know, we're going to Kernersville. We're going to Kernersville, the tech capital of the world. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Um, so I would say that um, that's one thing that um, you need to think about is that the recruiters have access to jobs that aren't listed. Now here's the other fact that happens is that some companies will use a recruiter, use multiple recruiting companies and post it. So they're not, they're not working exclusively with, with their recruiting agency. That's maybe Coder Friend is called in, but they're also working with tech systems or Robert Half or something like that. And they have it posted on Indeed. Um, so let's say that you sometimes apply for a job and you probably notice this when you're applying for roles, you never get a call back is because, um, they felt required to post it and, but the recruiters work in the back end already given them resumes. Um, and that thing's been on indeed for like five minutes, but they're already looking at and already interviewing candidates. Yeah. Sometimes it's like an internal requirement that they have to post it for some reason. They have some weird system they have to follow, but they're never going to, you're never going to get it from applying on indeed. Right. And so, so every now and then um, you will get to a, a job that is truly posted by the company and they're not working with recruiters. And that's the only way to get that job. And in that case, um, even in internally in here, when we're doing job placement, our um, candidates are looking for jobs on their own, as well as what we're looking for. And then they share all their leads with us. And then we tell them, OK, this one is posted directly from the company. You need to apply directly. This one's being handled by this recruiting firm. You need to work through them. Um, we've called and we we are not going to be able to get that one. And so we want them to find a job either through us or with our assistance and showing them how to get in. The second thing people do is they don't follow up. So like if you're doing it yourself, they don't 
they just send the resume in and they never follow up. And so like, you need to follow up a lot by sending emails. Um, and it's okay. I mean, like, um, to, to send emails and, and continue to follow up, look interested in the position and try to win it that way. Try to call in. Um, that's what we do. And so I think it's okay. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, okay. uh, don't, don't know it. Yeah. There's a question. SQL worth learning in 2020. Most values in NoSQL, like MongoDB, Firebase, etc. Oh, I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I just think we see a lot of yeah. I, yeah. I yeah, well, that's that's a good point. Yeah. Um, these the MongoDB, like, and the NoSQL stuff, they do. They have heavy marketing campaigns. They talk yeah. about this stuff, yeah. and it's trendy. Um, yeah. But go to, go to a company. Are, are they using those things? Yeah. And so Firebase is for a different thing anyway, altogether. That's just for real time. So like if you want to um, buy into a real time database, push notification database, then you need that feature in your uh, thing. Then Firebase is a solution for that. Um, so but that's something to know about. But um, if you're just looking at large amounts and looking on large projects, that's still SQL Server. It's still Oracle. I mean, that's still the way it is. Um, so you run into a lot of um, relational DB still. I mean, you can look at NoSQLs like Mongo. Um, right. They're for different use cases. Yeah, it depends on the, yeah, uh, exactly. It depends on what project. you're building, right? Yeah, so yeah. There's a lot more to know about Transact SQL. If you know Transact SQL, then you can look at, um, you can work on SQL, like SQL Server and Microsoft Land, or um, it's definitely, um, it translates well into Oracle and the bigger systems. And so like in my world, that's the types of jobs that we're trying to get is these shops that um, are building projects. Um, they're using SQL Server. It doesn't mean that we don't run across no uh, no SQL um, like Raven or something like that or Mongo. But, you know, I think you need to if you're if you're just starting out, SQL is the thing to know. If you've been around for a while and you're already no SQL, then you can start looking at no SQL things like Mongo. You know, if you're working on a small project, those things may make sense. All right, cool. Here we go. Here's a question on topic for our topic today. Um, so six for people that have already took the next step. So mm. um, Yubani has his first job, but what does he do next? He's okay. hit the first hurdle. Like that's the hardest one, right? Yeah. yeah. So now it's just, it's just, it's called work, man. And you just got to work on your job, be as productive as you can um learn as much as you can from if you're if you have seniors or people around you that you can learn um and then try to um, make as make as much impact as you can for the company and work really really hard at learning new skills and then you're probably still going to be coding on the weekend you know just uh, picking up learning stuff keeping up um so stay committed to your craft i would say um that's that's how you make a living now that's cool it's glad he's got in that's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. I love that. That's yeah. very cool. Okay, you want to take a look at our uh, review um, about okay. Apple? Going to take a look at cool question about. Um, I did want to answer that one. Which one? That is log overflowing. That's so weird that I get uh, that. Okay, in this one. <laughs> yeah, it's SQL yeah, server log it, overflow. You need to um, truncate those logs, man. Okay, and so the log is uh, keeping up with the changes for SQL Server, and then so. Um, in SQL Server, there's a truncate statement that you can run um, to um, truncate the log. You also can back them up. Um, but yeah, that's gonna it'll eat, it'll chew up your disk step, disk space if you're doing a lot of heavy transactions. It's a common problem, uh, and you can look at truncating the logs. There you go. You need to know to search for truncating the logs. I guess that's yeah. that's, the, yeah. that's probably the keyword there. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we got uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, we had a guy on here, um, Stehan, who goes by live, who I haven't seen comment today, so maybe isn't here today, but we're oh, going to no. look at his stuff anyway. So I'll drop him. I got his email, so I'll drop him this video back once we've done this if he's not here. Okay. If he is, right. drop us a comment, Stehan, that'd be awesome. So we took a look at the app that you had created. So this is the first app that he's ever created. He used uh, .NET Core to create it, so we said we would take a look at it and give him some feedback. Okay. Cool. So I think you have it, right? Yeah. So share. Can, let me uh something down there. Let me pull it up here. There, there we go. go. All right. So um Stan, and hopefully if you will send it to you this video if you're not here already. 
but he built this in .NET Core and we would review it. He asked us to review it and we'll review anyone else's too. If you want to send it to us, we'll try to get it on the show. If you have an application that you've built, give you some feedback. So um, by trade, I'm a coder um, and then Kevin is on the design side. So before I break into the application and what do you think about the design here, Kevin? So I, I like the colors. I like mm -hmm. the gradient. I'm guessing he's used CSS to do the gradient. I didn't look too far at this. Right. Um, but my suggestion would be to um, uh, take some of the color out. I personally would change the background on this first page. I would just make it white or a solid color or make the transparency of that middle section darker. Right. And then maybe blur that background image. You can still have it as an abstract thing, but I would take it into Photoshop or something. Or maybe do a CSS blur on it mm -hmm. um, and just tone it down a little bit because it's kind of right. busy um, right. just from a design perspective. And from a speed perspective, I would definitely do it in Photoshop. Um, you can put okay. the blur in CSS. It's just more work for the browser to do. Okay, especially uh, when it's a whole screen like that, I'm guessing. Yeah, exactly. And then um, the other thing here is, and this is just me, is... Um, See this display your skills? It's just super hard to read. You know? I think that's part of the problem that it's on yeah. um, that the background just it just hides it. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, I don't know how you feel about this, Kevin. I feel like text should be um, on one end or the other on the spectrum. Like, yeah, it's dark the, or light. The more, the more contrast, the better. Yeah. So, like a <laughs> yeah. black or a really dark gray. I do like dark grays instead of just pure blacks right now. And yep. then um, definitely. I like um, light grays for white instead of pure white. And then you just have to make a, the background darker light enough to make sure the contrast stands out. Exactly. So, Con contrast is everything. You just yeah. want to make sure you have good contrast in it. Okay. The other thing I noticed. It's got a good is, base. Yeah. I think it's looking pretty good though. Um, so like the thing I noticed is we've got this about page here too. And okay. we, this is one of the things we were talking about. It's like, it seems like you would carry the colors from the first page to the last page. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, try and be consistent with it too. Yeah. yeah. If you flick through all the pages, you'll see they're all just a little, they're, they're close, yeah. but they're just a little bit different. They just, so each yeah. page has its own little look. If you right. can carry the colors across each page, that'll take it a long way to make it feeling more coherent. Right. And so now here you can see that we've got this drop shadow here, which is kind of, it's cool looking. I see a lot of login templates using this drop shadow, but then you go over to, to um, the home page, and he could have used the drop shadow here. Yep. So you could just decide which way you want it to look. And you yep. know, so this is um, a little bit wider and it's, it, you know, it's a little yeah. bit more. This is another page. I would just change the background again. Yeah. I like it. It's, it's colorful. Mm -hmm. I get it. But um, I would just try seeing what it looks like, just white or just a dark color or abstracting it somehow with a blur or something, mm -hmm. yeah. or maybe black and white or just something that, um, again, yeah. Makes, makes it better contrast. Another thing too, if you're going to use background photos on your site, like he's out in the field here and he, you know, he's wishing that he could fly rockets for a living, you know, like <laughs> he's looking up. And then here it's like, I'm in the office coding. So yeah, it's just, it's just not, I mean, it's cool. Yeah. But yeah. um, they're all cool individually standalone, but they are, they're good photos. Definitely. Yeah. I like yeah. the photos are great, but right. yeah, they don't fit together necessarily. Yeah. I right. agree. Yeah, so they don't fit together necessarily that well. And then we go to the certificate page. Same thing here. Now we've got more of an abstract thing. Well, it's so this is cool. the meat of the thing, right? This yeah, is the exactly. this is the app, right? Mm -hmm. This is what the app that he designed. Right. Um, Stian basically wanted to create a. I think the goal was to create a um, a place that certificates could be stored, and you could pull them up as a, a PDF and print them out or view them. That was the yeah. the goal. His goal, right? And so again, you know, we've got the purple going on here, but this is blue and it's just different than the other page. So like yep. follow, what I would say is stick with one design and just carry it all the way through that. You don't have to be creative on every single page. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about the app a little bit. And this is kind of what's near and dear to my heart as we build apps here for um, Coder Foundry. Um, we focus in on building apps that solve a business problem. That's one of the big things that we do. And so we give our students applications that they have to build. They build the bug tracker, they build a financial portal, um, they build a blog site. Those right now, currently, that's what we're building in the class. This is similar to what I would say, um, maybe to our blog site, very similar in functionality. But what I want to do for him is, how can we take this to the next level, I think, He's got a great base here. Everything's looking good. So you can see here he's got a certification. Um, I am curious how he did the ellipses if he's using CSS for this, which is kind of cool if you are. 
Um, but like, you know, so we got on a list here in a grid and you can click on them and you can see it. All right. And so that's kind of cool. cool. It creates yeah. a PDF. He said he yeah. used a, um, uh, on the GitHub side, he mentioned that he used a, a JavaScript plugin for the PDF, which is cool. Yeah. So you could Looks like cool. embed it right in the page. Otherwise yep. it would come up in like a browser if you had Adobe plugin or whatever in yep. your browser. So that's kind of cool. Um, you know, we could put some spacing around this, let it breathe on the corners and not go all the way to the edge of the screen. You know, you could do that kind of thing. But yep. in general, I like this is probably an H1 and this is like an H4 or something like that. So that's, that's kind of cool. And then um, this is embedded. So all of this is pretty solid. Um, what I would say from here is there's no like definitive back button. And so while, yes, you can use the back button up here, I get that. But like a lot of times um, users want something in here, some kind of other navigation inside the site. So here's a test for it. If you filter and search for something on the previous page, go to a certificate, click it, and then go back, does the filter stay? We'll find out. Because that would be a thing, right? That would be a usability style thing to look at. So I spelled it wrong. We'll do game. <laughs> Ooh, is it case sensitive? No. All right, cool. And so, like, um, so I could pick this, and then yeah. Uh, go back. And then if you went back, does it? What does it do there? Just interest. Yeah, it's gonna keep. Okay, going. so it does. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. All right. So, um, but here's here's the other thing, Stan. What you can do. So. Let's let's talk about another thing. So, like, um, before I get into that, so let's let's go to this login page, and I'm assuming that I can log in to upload my own certificates. So, there's this kind of thing where there's multiple users in this database that houses certificates for multiple people, um, and so that's what I'm assuming that the goal of this site is. So, but there's no way for a hiring manager, if you're using this to get a job, to actually test out the functionality. So, you need a a trial place or a demo login where they could just demo a test user, upload a certificate, um, those kind of things. Um, because if I was a hiring manager, I'm not giving you my email address necessarily and creating an account um, to yep. see how it's just, well. It's just a barrier, work. right? It's, it's just a barrier. a barrier you don't want people to have. And you see this in demo sites in professional software where you'll have a demo and you can go demo it out and try it out before you buy. So you can try before you buy. So I would work on a demo way that you don't have to register. You can just use it. But let's go back to this. Here's the thing that I think where this app may fall down a little bit is that um, I'm assuming this is going to be the um, place to hold all certificates for everybody. And so let's say that you have 10,000 people come to your site and upload their certificates. And you're assuming that the an employer is one one that's going to look at this. That's what I'm looking at. And so um, I think this needs to go from just game to um, I want to search by the author or the holder of the certificate um, inside the internals, which I didn't log in. I couldn't see. Um, you may want to create certificates um, that you want to host here, but you don't want them to be public in all the search and you want to create private links. So like one time use links. Um, and you could email those to people. Um, so I know that you're using SendGrid. I'm assuming you use the SendGrid for um, this forgot password thing. Um, so like uh, you can use SendGrid where they could send out the links to the person that they want, and then they could view them in a um, in a private fashion if they wanted to do that. So I think those are a couple of features that would do. Is first make this where it's um, you have to search by author or search by certificate holder and see their certificates. And you may use the email address for this or the first name, last name, and email address, something like that to authenticate who the person is. So an employer could find them. Um, otherwise they're in here and there's 10,000 people in here and he's trying to hire a game developer, but he's already talking to John who holds a certificate. It's just not going to be, it's going to, he's going to see everybody's certificate for every type. Um, so I think it's more makes more sense to search by author, you know? Yeah. You kind of have to think through your use cases, yeah. right? Like how is it yeah. going to get used? Right. Exactly. And then you could send these, I think, with a private link that the um, person doesn't have to log in with. Just click on the link and they see the certificate and then it's and they don't have to log in with it. But overall, man, it looks pretty cool. This is in .NET Core. Um, you're using um, auth authentication authorization. That's great. Um, it's obviously hitting the database here to store these. That's awesome. 
Um, you've got a really kind of neat little thing that you can come in here where you use a library to embed PDFs in a page. You don't commonly see that. So you yep. solve that problem. That's really cool. That's really strong. Um, so I think, yeah, man, you've uh, put a little more UI work on it. Make this where you can read it. Um, make it more use case around an employer looking for a certification. Give it better, better search um, functionality here. I think you got something. Um, one of the things you could look into too is there's some grid plugins too, since you've already went the plugin route. Um, JS data tables, if you're not using that, I don't think you are using that here, is something that you could also implement. Yeah, but he mentioned um, trying not to use as many plugins. <laughs> like he wants yeah. to keep his technical debt low so he could learn the stuff in core. Yep. Oh, so, he'll get it. He's also yeah. got his, um, his GitHub uh, repo here. One thing we did notice, like in his about page, that uh, if you click here, um, this link is wrong and yeah, it blows broken. up. So it um, looks like you're um, trying to make trying this to find a, a local page. So, yeah, yeah, a relative link to the website. And um, but if you take it off, let's see. Oh, and this is the end right there. Hey, man, what's up? It's got a cool tower defense game in C sharp. I want to play that. <laughs> Let me clone that and play it. <laughs> if it's done. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe next time. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, it's pretty cool. Um, so like he's got his GitHub here and he's done exactly what we say students should do is like a uh, GitHub isn't enough. They need to have a way that you can host it. Yeah, so, uh, got to publish it. Yeah, and he's got it published somewhere. So that's pretty cool. All right. Super cool. All right, it's kind of cool. All right, let's, let's get back to the questions here and uh, see what's... what's um, yeah. Let's see here. Um, talking about portfolios, how many projects max can you put in your portfolio? As many as you can build. Asking. As many <laughs> as you can build. And highlight the ones that you think are the best. Um, so you can highlight the top three or the top one. But you can put a, um, as many portfolio projects as you have. I don't think you can have too many. But if you have a thousand, I mean, maybe you want to scale it back well, a little bit. Let's just, 10. well, let's talk about what, what, is, a, what is a portfolio project? What yes. is what is a project? That's a different thing because yeah. if you had ten versions of Tic Tac Toe, you probably wouldn't want to put. Yeah, that I don't right. consider those projects. I consider those coding challenges. So, like, uh, coding challenges are things that you're just doing. It's not really super functional. So, if you're gonna have Tic Tac Toe, if you're gonna have Tic Tac Toe on your website as your portfolio project, that thing better have multiplayer. It better have a way to like <laughs> arrange tournaments, you know, like <laughs> it's gotta, it can't just be uh, you can an X and a zero. Hey, look, I saw the cat, you know, um, it's got to be more than that. Um, so it's got to have some really um, robust business type features to it. All right, cool. So as many as you can get there. Go. Cool. Frank can, asked me if you can build the book track in JavaScript. Yeah, you can build anything in JavaScript. Absolutely. Um, so, like, I guess um, maybe it's not. Can I build it? Maybe it should I build it? Should I? Yeah, you can. You can use React and <laughs> Angular if you want. Yeah, I mean, so like, if you're looking for Angular jobs, build it in Angular. Um, if you see that there's a ton of C Sharp ASP.NET jobs in your area, Frank, build it with C Sharp. Um, yeah. But you're probably asking that question because you already know JavaScript, and I totally get that. So, if you want to build it with the things you know. Um, by all means, do it. It needs a back end, though. It can't be just a pure front end project. It's got to have a database. So you're going to have to implement Node or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Takit's back again. Takit's been on with us all week. That's awesome. Thanks for coming back. He, okay. That's awesome. Right. So he's in university, got offered an unpaid internship. Do you think it's worth taking it to focus on making projects and building my portfolio? Hmm. It's unpaid. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I know how you feel about unpaid internships, but. Uh, Maybe, Depends on maybe what you get out of it, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't know where the internship is. I don't know. Um, is there any kind of cachet to being at this place? Um, is the guy just trying to get free work, or is this a real like place where you could go work and um, get and and take that experience and and push that into another job? Um, an unpaid t internship should last no more than three to six months. Or it's yeah, you're probably better off than just working on your own stuff. But the internship could keep you focused and keep you um, keep you coding and keeping um, doing things too. So if you're going to do nothing, um, then I would take the internship. But if you're going to actually work on your stuff, I would um, work on my stuff. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Hey, Tech Rally's back. We'll ask him and get him a second. Cool. When I look at job uh, search, I, I see that PHP is valid. Yes, it is valid. 
Let's talk about WordPress. Yeah, you know it's WordPress. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Um, yeah. We had, um, we're trying to place a uh, PHP person right now that we're looking for. So if you're in North Carolina, Winston-Salem, um, Greensboro, Kernersville, and you have PHP skills, um, send a link to Kevin at info at Coder Foundry. I've got a job. <laughs> you know, I need to, I've got one. We need somebody that can do that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so like they're looking for PHP front end people. Um, so that mainly a lot of that is WordPress. A lot of it's other things. Um, it is. But, when you see stats about PHP, you need to look yeah. at like how much of yeah. that is WordPress. It's a yeah. lot. Popularity a lot. is because WordPress is super popular. It's a crazy popular CMS. And what I'll say this is I don't look down on any job if you're coding. So if you're if you're rocking out some PHP and they're paying you money to make WordPress sites, by all means, do that. But you also can learn something else on the on the side, like full stack, um, um, C sharp as well. While you're getting paid to do your PHP stuff, so let me uh, definitely put on tech rally. What he said. You see his tech rally? Uh, let me see here. Oh, I do see that. That's funny. Hold on. I see seventy one now, not sixty one. Tech 71. rally. You're slow on the update. <laughs> hey, you know Hold what? On, that I'm, was. That was a few minutes ago. Okay. So we'll let, yeah. we'll let him slide. <laughs> so he said the stream is on fire. Hey, Tech Rally has a channel. I subscribe to it. He's I did too. Good, a pretty good watch, man. So yeah, like, uh, like go sub up Tech Rally um, after you sub us. But like, That was Alex Lee, I think. So it was yeah. Alex Lee. Yeah, he's, yeah. yeah, I like his channel. It was good. I, I yeah. went and watched some videos. It was good. Yeah, that's cool stuff out there. All right. Uh, let me see here. Um, oh, here we go. There's somebody. Um. Just thanks us for doing this. Lots of valuable information. Self-taught developer started in November. Um, started applying, working on LinkedIn profile currently. We have a video. We talked to a guy um, a few months back, yeah. Teddy Buris, mm -hmm. um, who is a LinkedIn like specialist. We have a video about this. If you go back and look through our channel, um, how to leverage LinkedIn as a developer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think you can um, make sure your portfolio is attached up there. Um, write some posts on some technical um, using their um, there's posts and articles. Um, you can put some stuff out there on LinkedIn for articles and posts as well. Um, you can link in if you're doing stuff on Medium. You can link your Medium in there, um, but you also can share your portfolio. Um, you can post videos on there. So if you want to like screen capture your project and you and you can show make a little video demo on your project too as well. Yep. There's a lot you of things can, you can do on LinkedIn to make yeah. it look a lot cooler than it is. And you, you can leverage LinkedIn. You can also just leverage social media too. We spoke to yeah. Hashim about this on another video, leveraging social media to get a job. Start yeah. yourself a, a Twitter account, be active, um, yeah. join Facebook groups, those kind of things, um, and yeah. just be part of the community and bam, you can you can get a job out of it. Okay, cool. All right. This this is great. Uh, Aziz is 16 um so he's not going to be working until 2026 that's crazy makes me feel old wow um what technologies that's that's an impossible question that's impossible because <laughs> it moves so fast right i would learn web dev right now next year i may be saying something different in 2026 and that's, and that's the problem right i guarantee i'm gonna be saying something 2026 <laughs> so i'm still on this planet um you know that's six years from now so like um I think um, that's 26 years. Well, no, it's six years. Sorry. I'm yeah, idiot. six years. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're in 2020. <laughs> yeah, not 20. Pandemic year, 2020. <laughs> so six years from now, I would say that um, it's a good bet that you'll still see C Sharp. Um, but that doesn't mean that I should learn the bleeding edge right now today. I would learn. Um, I'd learn web tech right now, what's current. And then you'll be able to... Um, switch to the newer stuff whenever that newer stuff comes out that's in demand you know in the 90s we didn't we weren't thinking about javascript so now we are so right. in the 90s we didn't know c sharp ones didn't invented now it is so like it'll change you're right and there's something that isn't even out there yet yeah. that that will be by 2026 yeah. we, we talk about this all the time these emerging technologies they come and go but some come and stay and there's something between now and then that'll come and will be popular. No so um, hit Rafael Hernandez up there. He's got a good question. I'll, I'll put it up here. Yeah, stick it up. Yeah. You always say take the first job. What if it's a short-term contract? As long as they're paying you, yeah, take the short-term contract. Um, you can, Rafael, you can always put that on your resume. 
and waiting around for the FT role, let's say that um, your job search for the FT role is going to take you six months, but you could have gotten a, um, a six month contract. You made money while you were look, still looking. Um, and then a lot of times and what people don't know about short time contracts is they can get renewed. You do a great job and you're coding for them. Um, they can renew you as well. So like um, I would say is get as much experience as you can any way you can and um, get paid to do it. And so if someone's willing to pay you right now, I would go work on it. Um, and then it'll be easier and easier to find those roles after you have um, stacked some experience on your resume. All right. Cool. I like that. Yeah. Good question. Here we go. Tommy Lynn wants to know if we're reviewing other projects. We'll totally take a look at it. He finished a boot camp in Canada. I wonder what boot camp. What boot camp um, did you go to, Tommy Lynn? We would like to know. And I would love to see your portfolio. Yeah. Send it in. We'll take a look. Send it out. Um, um, here you go. I'm, Sergio's asking too. So sending a portfolio. And yes, it is free. We're going to... Do it on the channel here. So, yeah, but Sergio, <laughs> we may not do everyone's, but we will never yeah. charge for it. But like, uh, yeah. we're not, we're not, we're not like that. We'll, we'll look so, at it and um, here's, we'll do it. Here's how to send us an email to info at codafoundry.com. And I will put this in the chat here too so you guys can see that. We will um, take a look. We yeah. promise. We promise. Well, one thing we promise that we won't embarrass you or say anything no, horrible we're not about it. Touch. We're not going to do that um, unless you ask us to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like Wayne Morano's comment there. Let me put him on there. He'll code. Oops, I missed it there. Too many cooks in the kitchen here. He said he'll code for <laughs> Bitcoin. <Kevin. laughs> okay. I'll, yeah, I'll code for a whole Bitcoin. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> today's value not not the value 10 years ago what is bitcoin what is bitcoin it's like i don't know what it is these days um i don't know it's still it's still above ten thousand. i'm sure okay. um here we go here's a question msv who again has hung around with us all week thank you for coming back we appreciate it uh what not to say in an interview how oh, to impress them you know i was gonna say something snarky but let me um <laughs> Let me tell you some real things, what to say. So in your goal in an interview is to get an offer. Okay. That's your goal. And how do you impress them is a, um, be very interested in the job. Tell them that you would love to work here. Um, even if, um, you feel like you wouldn't, um, you want to do that. You do not need to talk about if you're working with a recruiter, benefits, salary, any of that stuff, all you want to do is get an offer and then you decide whether it's the right offer for you or not. Right. Um, if you're working with a recruiter, you don't have to answer questions. So how little will you take or how much will you take? Um, you know, but if they ask you that directly, you can just pre prepared to tell them exactly what you would take and then don't, don't vary from that. <laughs> um, things that I would avoid, especially if you're trying to break in is asking um, questions about, work-life balance, environment, um, those kind of questions, because a lot of people will tell you, oh, interview the, the company hard. And like, remember your goals to get an offer. <laughs> so like uh, you don't want to necessarily um, insinuate that you don't like the culture that's being presented during the interview. You know, um, so culture questions about how the work life is, you know, do I work 60 hours a week here, hundred hours a week, you know, or am I a slave? Those are really bad questions. I would just talk, stay focused on your experience. Um, if you have a portfolio, show them that. Um, if you have a portfolio, I think that's deadly um, impressive. Like it'll just, it knocks the room away when you have a really cool portfolio that you can show them and that's how you impress them. You know? Right. So did you have a great story about getting a job one time? I remember you telling yes. that story about talking, just talking about what they were doing. Yeah. So like um, I went in and interviewed at a large manufacturing company and uh, we were going to um, um, interview and then they were doing manufacturing back in the late eighties. And I was doing a, you know, full-time gig there before Star Cortex. And I can remember um, asking them, um, so what are you guys trying to build? And the hiring manager and the dev manager just sit there and talked about work for <laughs> five minutes and i just chimed in wow that's cool i'd really like to work on that it's interesting wow that's amazing and then um before i hit the door um pretty much i was getting in my car like five minutes after leaving 
um, they'd already called the recruiter back and wanted to get my um, my rates and everything like that. That's awesome. And the recruiter said, so what did you do in there? They were amazed with you. And I'm like, I didn't say a word. I just asked them about work. <laughs> and so that's one of the things that you can do is um, ask them about what they do, um, what are the projects they're trying to build, um, what are the things that they're interested in, and um, get them talking about their jobs. And that makes you show that you're interested. So imagine like if you're dating a girl or something like that, and all you did in the interview was talk about you during your dinner with the girl, you're probably not going to get a call back. So be interested in the other party, show that you're interested in working there. I think that's how you can definitely impress them. Okay. Cool. I don't know about this, so I don't know if you do, but I'm going to put it up here anyway. So Michaela just joined the channel yesterday. That's awesome. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks for subbing. Um, what do you guys think about, I guess, is that VVVV or VL? Do you know what that is? No. I don't either. So. <laughs> is that bad? I don't know. Should I know I don't everything, know. Kevin? Should, I, are you disappointed in me? I should, up to now, this is the this is the first question. I think you've never seen the thing. I have no idea what this is. Google it. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to look it up real quick. Yeah, so like, it's a multi-purpose yeah. toolkit. Um, so it's, a, it's an ID, maybe? Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. know. All right. I don't know. We'll move on to the next. We'll look it up for next time, maybe. Adam says he's off to learn PHP. <laughs> <laughs> well, get us something just, PHP, get, man. Let me show them. Uh, I'll show them what you got. Um, this is interesting. Okay. Difference between web developer and software developer. Is there's no? I mean, we use it interchangeably a lot, don't we? we? Do. It's like depends um, on what environment you, you you're working in, right? Yeah. So, a web developer obviously is building web apps, and sometimes a software developer could be building desktop applications. But a software developer is a web developer, absolutely, right? 100%. or a web developer is a software developer. Sorry, yeah. but a software yeah. developer isn't necessarily a web developer. Right. Exactly. So, I think I hope that that's the difference. Um, there may be um, positions where you're looking for jobs and. They may um, title it as software developer, and that's typically they'll call it if it's some kind of desktop or some kind of hardware based, something that runs locally, and they'll definitely tag web developer. So here we go. I didn't read this, but let's see. Um, Chris says, took the first job, didn't ask enough questions. Mm -hmm. A month before my probation period ended, told me that the work I did for them is done and they'll outsource again if needed. How to avoid this? be a rock star <laughs> so chris sometimes they're just bad companies i mean just, could have been unavoidable you're yeah, right maybe there's nothing I mean, he could have done to change that paid, um for um and usually i'm i don't know where you're located but if you're in the u.s um usually a uh it's usually like a 90-day probation and and then you just got finished with what you had done and so like what you can do instead of putting it out as you get released, just chalk it up to a contract, put a contract gig out there and then find the next contract. Yeah. And it could so, have been like, always been the case. It could have been by design. That was always going to yeah. be the way it's nothing against you. Right. And then there's, I've ran into a lot of companies that are like that. They're trying to hire full time because they don't want to say it's a contract and they'll get people in, they'll rope them in and then they'll cut them loose in 90 days. Um, so you know, just as long as you got paid while you're there, it's it's you can call it a win. You finish the work, so that's cool. And then you just tell your next employer, hey, you know, I, I did a contract there. I finished it up. Everything was done and working. And so now I'm looking for my next opportunity to finish, finish another project. So they were small or they didn't have enough money. There's a lot of things you can do to talk, um, talk that out in your next thing. But now you got experience. Put it on your resume. Yep. Uh, Rabbi or Rabbi, can you give us some professional project ideas that we can build? The one project, pretty good one, yeah. <laughs> like uh, the one project, uh, it's a bug yeah. tracker. Go yeah. to our channel and look up the yeah. one project. There's, um, it's a, a it's, it's a 16 minute or 12 minute video, something like that. Yeah, and there's a demo video too, yeah. so you can see what one actually looks like after right. the after yeah. the video as well, right? So, um, we've demoed it too, as well. So, there's a couple in there that you can. We've demoed it and we talk about it quite a bit, quite extensively. But in general, if you want to archetype for professional projects, um, it must solve a business problem. It must have authentication authorization and it must connect to a database. So those those are the kind of things that uh, that we want to put in any professional project. 
a book tracker solves all those and you can build a different type of project. If you're not enamored with a bug tracker, you build something else. Um, just like, um, Stian did, he was, he was housing certificates, you know, that's kind of cool. Um, you know, here we go. Here's our answer from Michaelo. It's a visual language. VL is based on C sharp. So that was a question okay. from earlier that, yeah, I'd have to look it up. I'll look it up, man. I'll, uh, I will check it out and see what the deal is with it. I've never tried it out. And this is something I'll do this afternoon. Here's interesting. And we've talked about this. Talk about <laughs> it's, it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> yeah. It's good. Uh, you think working from home is going to explode because of recent events? We talked about this a lot on camera and off camera. Yeah. Um, Getting guaranteed work in the big cities, the biggest hurdle currently living in the middle of Australian desert. That's awesome. We have somebody in the middle of the Australian desert watching us. I can tell you this, man. I think the big thing that's hurting you probably in Australian desert is probably the time difference. But um, I have um, two people that I know. Um, one of them used to work here at Cortex and one of them came out of the Coder Foundry are both in the middle of... I shouldn't say the town, but let's just say it's a small <laughs> town in North Carolina. Um, and they're working for um, a New York City firm full time remote. So it's possible, um, you know, I, you know, I mean, there could be some reasons why you can't get work in New York City and Australian desert. But like, um, I think this is going to change everything. I don't know what it's looking like in Australia, but um, work from home has exploded in the last four weeks where yeah. everybody is on teams or they're on sky um you know skype or zoom yeah well through necessity right yep. it's been a it's been a market for a while but now like it was essential people had yeah. to they're forced to yeah. so and it's i would say for us it's been smooth but i'm yeah. sure for others it's not as smooth um yeah. but some will go back. I think some will stay. I think it's one of those like it has changed things. Right. I don't. I don't know what the job market looks like in Australia. Um, so I'm assuming that's when you're talking about the big cities in Australia. You're talking about the other cities around you. Um. So, um. But yeah, it's definitely going to be possible. Um. Tommy said his final projects at Lighthouse Labs. That's where we're in, in Toronto. Okay. So cool. we'll, we we'll definitely take a look at your uh, stuff, Tommy. We'll probably do this. I don't know. We have Scott tomorrow, so we'll probably look at these and we'll probably talk about them on Monday, maybe Monday, okay. Tuesday. Yeah, like gonna, that. That's we'll keep going, on. I guess. Yep. All right, cool. <laughs> it's funny, David says. <laughs> so I don't want to I don't want to work at Google. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> Lots of people do though. I mean, I get um, it. I mean, but like um, there's there's plenty of of places to work. Um, so many, and I want to bring this up about the, the finding a job too. So many people base their whole preparation for job search around the Google interview process. Yeah. So we see all of these things about like, Oh, you need to know, you know, 20,000 algorithms and you need to be able to memorize all these things. And literally you can walk into a smaller company that, you know, say a 50 person company that has a 10 person IP IT shop and win on a portfolio and they're never going to ask you like, you know, how to like find the two largest numbers in these multidimensional arrays and that are only beside numbers less than four or something like that. You know, like, um, I'm just making that up, but like you could find, um, a job based on having a really professional portfolio with project work because most of the time, most people are very reasonable. They just need to get stuff done. And so it's not, um, you don't have to be, um, a computer scientist guru to be able to work at these places. Google has different needs and they have, they're interviewing for different positions and they have different types of projects. Um, and so I don't think you should base your entire career about wanting to work at Google or Microsoft for that matter. However, we do have Coder Founder grads that work at Microsoft. Yeah. You know? Um, and so like they're guys just like you, David, regular guys, um, you know, James um, was um, driving a truck like a delivery truck and now he's at microsoft in charlotte it's cool it's you know? very cool <laughs> yeah. um and there's also different roles at microsoft too and in google like you know you may not work on the product teams um this team in charlotte is working on the internal tools at microsoft for sales and things like that so um, here we go david said he actually has first-hand experience of this too he was there <laughs> he said it was horrible uh what's that i mean uh, he was, oh, he worked there. 
Yeah. So interesting. Okay, I get it. I if mean, different people are going to have different experiences. Yeah, That's yeah, going to be the thing. You could have been on a team and and Google could like run you ragged. I really don't know. I've never worked there, so um, it it could be bad. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. What, Wayne says he works at Microsoft. So Wayne, you're like you'll know Scott who's coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Scott? I'm going to be your boss. <laughs> so he can. Wayne, least- we can get we get Wayne on the show. How about that? <laughs> What do you do at Microsoft, Wayne? Let us know. Yeah, let us know what you do at Microsoft. That's kind of cool. That'd be cool. Very yeah, cool. That's very cool. And where you're at, are you in Redmond or are you um, locally um, in some of the uh, other places? So, cool. Um, let's do um, let's do one last question okay. then before we wrap this up because it's Oh, it's already so an hour. Go. Wow. Okay, it, this went by it, fast. It's been an okay. hour. It did. We didn't even do trivia today. I didn't even get I my uh, my game trivia in. Okay. But that's cool. okay. <laughs> right. Um, what about freelance? Markets like Upwork. The goal is to be self-employed. We've heard mixed comments. It's a race to the bottom in terms of making money. And I've seen that race to the bottom in terms of making money too. From from places like Upwork, not only from a developer's perspective, but also from a designer perspective, when you can go there and get something for like five bucks, it's like it's, right. you can't compete with that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, man. I, I wouldn't do it. But it but is like, paid. That, but it's paid, though. So, like, I'm going to, you know, I don't want to put my situation on top of what you're doing. So, um, if you're working and uh, let's say you're working a job not related to tech right now, um, but you want to break into the tech place, the freelance marketplace may help you build up a resume. Um, once you have a resume, <laughs> just set your rates out there and then only work for the rate that you want to work for. Um, you know, um, I think that, um, Upwork is trying to make it as cheap as possible. And sometimes those projects aren't great to work on. So um, they may be asking for the world and want to pay you $10 for it. So yeah, I'd be careful, but like, you know, if you can find a small project that you feel like you can do pretty quickly, knock it out, um, add it to your resume until you can get that good, that sweet um, full-time job with a 401k and and insurance. So I think it's a path to the ultimate goal of a full-time job. Cool. Let's do one bonus. Yeah. Ghoul. I love the name. Yeah. Um, I'm using React, Golang, and Google Cloud for my web app. That will include a bug tracker. Any concern about my plan? Any tips? Hmm. Any concerns? There's nothing wrong with um, React JS. Um, Google Cloud is what I would call the third cloud, maybe the fourth. I saw somebody make a joke about this the other day, yeah. and I was like, wow, is it that bad? It was yeah. like it was like you go Azure or AWS and like and that's it. And there's everybody else. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's everybody else. And I know it's Google. I get it, but like um, the only thing I would say is look at um, you could look at AWS or Azure. Um, depending on pricing, I think they're all kind of priced kind of the same. That's my only thing. Uh, but um, React is, I mean, it's in demand, so it's pretty cool. All right. Yep. Cool. I guess we can wrap this up. All right. Um. So I uh, please give us a subscribe. Um, share it with your, uh, you know, anyone you want. Give us an invite uh, or uh, turn on notifications and we'll tell you what's coming out tomorrow. Scott Hansel will be on here tomorrow talking about .NET. Please do not miss that. Um, if you want to send, uh, if you have questions for Scott, uh, you may want to hit Kevin up now and then we might can um, bring you in the green room and you can meet Scott in person and talk to him. Yeah, DM uh, at Coda Foundry on Twitter, and we'll take a look at that. I would do that over the next 12 hours. I wouldn't wait till noon tomorrow to do that. Um, so we'll probably um, have to do it ahead of time with Scott coming on. I think Scott's a retro gamer too, so maybe yeah. he'll play a yeah. quiz. He might. <laughs> he, might play the game. he is. He, he is a retro gamer. I've seen. Yeah. Uh, I've seen some of his stuff. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. So anyway, so some of these questions I could ask him could be pretty cool. <laughs> we'll yeah. see. What's Madden football name before 1993? <laughs> Trick question. I don't yeah. like that question. No, oh, I wouldn't have got that. <laughs> like, I would not have got that. That's a dope question. <laughs> hey, well, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope we made you laugh today. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at high noon with Scott Hanselman. Good luck and keep coding, guys. <laughs>